In the following video, we expose a number of some of the most deadliest reported attacks by crocodiles in history. A species responsible for at least 1,000 attacks on humans per year, most of which of course are fatal. A statistic that the following victims would tragically become a part of in the most brutal of ways. From the notoriously deadly waters of the Zambezi River to the deceptively beautiful creeks of the North Australian wilderness, these are nature's most brutal croc attacks. In the heat of a Queensland summer night, a group of friends gathered for a festive pre-Christmas celebration. They met at the hidden Turner Butterfly Farm, enjoying each other's company with laughter and delicious grilled food. But none of them could have predicted the dark and fateful turn that their night would take. As they ventured deeper into the Daintree Forest, an unknown danger watched silently, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. This is the horrifying true story of their deadly encounter with one of our planet's most formidable predators. On the evening of December 21st, 1985, just days before Christmas, the sweltering Queensland heat embraced a small group of friends as they gathered at the secluded Turner Butterfly Farm, just outside of town. The group was looking to celebrate the festive season with an early Christmas barbecue. As the aroma of grilled food wafting through the air and the crackle of hot oil filled their ears, the friends raised a toast to another holiday season spent together. Around 11.30 p.m., four adventurous friends from the group decided to break away from the festivities and explore the surrounding rainforest. After cutting through the dense foliage of the Daintree jungle, their journey would lead them to a wooden boardwalk. They would from this point venture further into the jungle until they found a private dock at the edge of Barrett Creek. This creek is an offshoot of the iconic Daintree River, which is one of the longest rivers in the area, and it's well known for its stunning rainforest surroundings, diverse wildlife, and rich ecosystem. The creek meanders through the dense tropical rainforest, creating a picturesque and serene setting. The area around the creek is lush and teems with unique flora and fauna. This includes a vast array of bird species, amphibians, reptiles, as well as mammals, some of the most notable of which include saltwater crocodiles, tree kangaroos, as well as the elusive cassowary, not to mention a number of the most venomous creatures on the planet, also called the region home. This includes serpents such as the eastern brown, coastal taipans, and death adders. The group then settled on to the dock, allowing the North Australian forest to serenade them with its nocturnal symphony, their faces illuminated by only the soft glow of a lone lamppost overhead. As they laughed and shared stories with one another, one of the friends proposed that they jump into the creek to escape the night's heat. They were all aware of the potential dangers that lurked beneath the surface, including bull sharks venturing in from the nearby Coral Sea, as well as the aforementioned fearsome saltwater crocodiles that called the region home. Despite these concerns, the still and shallow waters of Barrett Creek would lull the friends into a false sense of security. Maurice Meeling, the first to enter the water, felt a gnawing unease and quickly scrambled back onto the dock. His warnings to the others, however, fell on deaf ears. Seeing how calm the water was and believing that they could spot danger if there were any, the rest of the group would proceed into the water. John Robb and 43-year-old Beryl Ruck were the next to take the plunge, keeping close to the dock as they waded in the creek. Meanwhile, Maurice and his wife, Selena, opted for the safety of the jetty. Little did they know, however, that they were being silently observed by an over 5 meter long saltwater crocodile, lurking just beneath the inky surface of the creek. As the croc inched closer to the unsuspecting friends, the rainforest's chorus would suddenly fade to a hushed stillness. It was at this point that John would start feeling the very same uneasiness that Maurice had mentioned earlier. Overcome with tension, he as well would then attempt to climb back onto the dock. However, just before John could fully lift himself out of the water, a powerful explosion-like force surrounded him. Caught off guard, he was pushed back by the water's turbulence. Amidst the confusion and chaos, John would struggle to understand what had just happened. His friends on the dock, however, had seen everything very clearly. They had spotted the enormous body and tail of a crocodile and estimated it to be around 17 to 18 feet in length. 
Next, they saw Beryl Ruck, her face contorted with sheer terror as she raised her arms in a futile attempt to scream for help before vanishing beneath the water's surface, never to be seen again. Investigative reports would reveal that Beryl Ruck was likely taken by a notorious crocodile known as Big Jim. The quick and unclear nature of the attack caused lots of guessing and finger pointing. Instead of being seen as a tragic accident, Ruck's death would become sensationalized, a mysterious, odd, and beyond everyday experience. A few days before Ruck's death, a man was discovered executed mafia style with heroin in his pocket on a nearby road called Upper Daintree. The media was full of rumors that Ruck had witnessed the execution and was thereby killed to stop her from testifying. And some stories even said that Ruck had been cut up into pieces with a chainsaw and thereafter fed to the crocodiles. These outrageous rumors were so widespread that almost two months after Ruck's death, Queensland's Attorney General at the time, Neville Harper, had to address them in Parliament to deny any connection between her death and the supposed drug-related execution. It wasn't until several weeks after the incident that a massive crocodile was reported to have been killed in the vicinity, and after performing a necropsy, the stomach contents of the crocodile would reveal a chilling discovery. The severed arm of a woman. And since DNA testing was still not available at the time of the incident, it was impossible to identify the remains definitively. However, given the proximity to the location of Beryl Ruck's disappearance, as well as the grisly nature of the discovery, it was widely believed that the arm belonged to her. Since the implementation of protective measures in 1971, crocodile populations in Northern Australia have seen a significant increase. Prior to this, their numbers had experienced a drastic decline due to overhunting, habitat loss, and the demand for their skin in the fashion industry. The decision to protect the crocodiles as a species was prompted by growing concerns about the potential extinction of these ancient reptiles. Conservation efforts included the establishment of sanctuaries and breeding programs, as well as habitat restoration and strict regulations against hunting and poaching. Additionally, raising public awareness about the importance of conserving these apex predators has contributed to the success of these programs. It's important to note that as a result of these protective measures, crocodile populations in Northern Australia have rebounded remarkably over the past several decades. Saltwater crocodile numbers specifically have grown from a few thousand individuals in the 70s to an estimated 100 to 200,000 today. While this recovery is a success story for wildlife conservation, it has also led to increased human-crocodile interactions and conflicts. In areas where crocodile populations are dense, Residents and tourists are urged to exercise caution to minimize the risk of unwanted encounters with these deadly apex predators. This includes following safety guidelines when near bodies of water, refraining from feeding the animals, as well as avoiding activities in crocodile-infested areas. On a warm Australian summer afternoon, 69-year-old Andrew Hurd headed towards the calm waters of Gayenda Creek near Hinchinbrook Island. An experienced sailor and fisherman, Hurd had made annual trips to the Hinchinbrook Channel a tradition for the past decade. But on this particular February evening, a massive male saltwater crocodile had been watching him silently from the shadows. This is the chilling account of Andrew Hurd's fatal encounter with one of nature's most formidable predators. On February 11, 2021, Hurd set off on a small fiberglass boat for a fishing trip. As the salty sea air filled his senses, the natural sounds of the Australian outdoors made the perfect backdrop. All was calm except for the boat's motor and the occasional cry of a bird. The creek is a small offshoot of the massive Hinchinbrook Channel, wound through a dense tropical wilderness. It was a picture of calm, hosting a variety of Australian wildlife including dugongs, turtles, dingoes, and agile wallabies. However, among the diverse wildlife in the area, one apex predator stands out, the saltwater crocodile. These formidable creatures inhabit the creek and of course pose a significant threat to other animals and humans alike. Saltwater crocodiles are known as estuarine crocodiles, are the largest living reptiles, and are known for their powerful jaws, strong swimming abilities, and ability to inhabit both saltwater and freshwater environments. Their presence adds an element of danger to the tranquil beauty of the creek, reminding all who venture into its waters of the untamed and unpredictable nature of the Australian wild. Upon nightfall, the creek was shrouded in darkness, the only light coming from the stars above. 
The sound of the nocturnal creatures were the only thing breaking the silence, in fact, as Hurd's small boat bobbed along the water's surface, a tiny speck in the vast ocean. It was Hurd's wife Erica who first noticed the concerning silence on the radio, a stark contrast from the usual updates of his location and catch that she would typically hear when her husband embarked on his fishing trip. This of course would trigger the first ripple of concern. As the hours rolled on, the silence from Hurd grew ominous, especially now that his absence was stretched far beyond the usual duration of his fishing trips. The clock ticked louder and louder in Erica's ears as time trudged forward, escalating her worry. No longer able to shake off the gnawing sense of dread, she would then contact the authorities. The break of dawn ushered in a search party to the quiet waters of Gayenda Creek. Their discovery, Hurd's overturned boat, its hull bearing the severe damage indicative of a crocodile attack. I'm sure it would have been very cranky with the crocs for wrecking the expensive fishing rod, wrecking the dinghy, but mostly taking him away from his family and friends. The serene facade of the creek was shattered, revealing a grim reality. Andrew Heard had disappeared, and the only remnant of him left behind was his damaged dinghy. Upon further investigation, wildlife officers would find two crocodiles, a massive 4.86 meter male and a smaller 2.85 meter female, and the stomach contents of the two would reveal the terrifying truth. Human remains, later confirmed to be herds. Forensic testing is underway after human remains were discovered inside a four meter crocodile. Typically in the crocodile kingdom, it's an individual crocodile that's responsible for hunting and killing prey. But when it comes to sharing, normally it's only the dominant males that share large kills with females, especially during the breeding season. This behavior is a part of their natural courtship process, as well as a way for males to assert their dominance and strength. However, the case of Andrew Heard painted a different, more complex picture. The predation of a human by two crocodiles simultaneously had never before been documented. During the time, this statement would have held true. However, in a poignant echo of the past Andrew Heard tragedy, a devastating discovery was made just this past May. The partial remains of Kevin Darmody, a 65-year-old fishing enthusiast who had disappeared on a trip in far north Queensland's isolated wilderness, were found within a crocodile. Darmody was spending his day along the peaceful banks of the Kennedy River at Riniru, or Lakefield National Park, tragically oblivious to the looming danger. Nearby campers were haunted by the chilling sounds of screams and frantic splashing, pointing to a deadly confrontation between Darmody and a large crocodile. He would have known then that his, um, it was imminent, you know, when, when you let out a scream like that, and that's pretty daunting to think about it like that. Authorities later speculated that Darmody may have ventured to the water's edge to retrieve a fishing lure, only to be abruptly seized by a massive saltwater crocodile. The search for Darmody quickly turned into a race against time, with an urgent rescue effort involving the police dive squad. The search came to a grim end when wildlife officers euthanized two crocodiles suspected of involvement in what turned out to be a fatal attack. The pair of salties, measuring 4.1 meters and 2.8 meters in length, were found about 1.5 kilometers upstream from Darmody's last known location, and a subsequent necropsy on the captured reptiles would reveal a sorrowful revelation. Human remains were found in one of the crocs. But despite this, investigators firmly believe that both crocs were in fact involved in the initial attack, eerily similar to the one that tragically claimed Andrew Heard's life. The stories of Andrew Heard and Kevin Darmody remind us of the need for ongoing research, awareness, and measures to ensure the safety of both humans and wildlife. And upon reflecting on these incidents, it's clear that the outcomes for both Heard and Darmody weren't just isolated tragedies, but a pattern that presents key lessons. Um. We do have to expect up here in far north Queensland that a lot of our waterways do inhabit crocodiles, especially in remote areas. There are a lot of larger crocodiles in the Lakefield area. Both men embarked on what were expected to be serene fishing trips, unknowingly entering the danger zone within the very waters that they cherished. And unfortunately, both would also see their lives cut short by salties in circumstances that hauntingly mirrored each other, commencing with an unsettling silence, escalating with intense searches, and culminating in the grim revelations of their fate. He was just a really good bloke, really accommodating, knew how to look after the tourists. He thought he had to deal with the crocodiles. You don't touch me, I don't touch you. Your soul be free. The anchorage is come, and your sails be filled with following winds. Saltwater crocodiles are one of the most feared animals on our planet. Not only are they the largest living reptiles in the world,
but they're undoubtedly one of our planet's most formidable apex predators, and are also responsible for approximately 1,000 human fatalities per year. The following video will depict one of these unfortunate incidents, which tragically saw the life of 22-year-old Brett Mann come to a gruesome end when a massive saltwater crocodile would fatally attack him in front of his closest friends on what was supposed to be a fun-filled outing. His true story would go down as one of the most horrifying crocodile attacks in recorded history. Litchfield National Park in the Northern Territory of Australia is a true natural gem. Boasting a stunning variety of flora and fauna, this region has over time become one of the most sought after tourist destinations in the area. Featuring eucalyptus trees, pandanus palms, mangroves, and towering termite mounds, Litchfield provides a breathtaking backdrop for adventurers and nature lovers alike. Not to mention, thrill seekers are in for a treat here as the region offers a myriad of adventure sports to choose from, including quad biking, hiking, and swimming, just to name a few. The landscape is also home to a diverse range of wildlife, from herbivores such as kangaroos and wallabies, to predators such as dingoes, and of course the mighty saltwater crocodile. Saltwater crocodiles are often referred to in Australia as salties, and are one of the most formidable predators on Earth, with a history dating back to the Cretaceous period around 200 million years ago. And as mentioned in the beginning of this episode, these spectacular creatures also possess a bite force that measures a whopping 3,700 pounds per square inch, a power unmatched in the animal kingdom. With such immense force in their bites, a healthy, fully grown salty is capable of biting through almost anything that it wants, including bone, thick tree trunks, and even metal. They're often observed crushing the shells of large turtles in the wild and literally breaking the bones of their prey when they bite down on a limb, which they of course rip off since they can't chew by performing their infamous death roll this allows them to devour large prey such as water buffaloes with reasonable ease, and they do it piece by piece. These reptiles are furthermore known for their stalking behavior, patiently waiting underwater for the ideal moment to strike. They possess remarkable stealth, and they can remain submerged in water for up to two hours, making them a significant threat to anyone who unknowingly ventures into their territory. This is why it's often advised that one should remain vigilant when venturing the edges of riverbanks or even beaches, as you truly never know when a stalking salty may be lurking just beneath the surface, waiting for an opportune moment to strike. Brett Mann, along with his two 19-year-old friends, Sean Blowers and Ashley McGlough, departed from their homes on December 21, 2003, at 11.40 a.m. After an hour-long drive, they would reach their preferred destination, which was a quad bike racing spot on the border of Litchfield National Park. The trio would often frequent this location and would always pass through a patch of familiar landscape consisting of the aforementioned eucalyptus trees, pandanus palms, mangrove trees, and massive termite mounds before arriving at the flat salt plains, an ideal area for quad biking. Sean, who was one of Brett's close friends, claimed that he knew the area well since he had been camping there with his family since the age of five. The group would then gear up and hit the muddy tracks with their quads. They would then spend the day joyfully spraying mud on each other while racing around on their quads, and by all accounts they were having one of the best days that they ever had at Kangaroo Flats. At approximately 4.30 p.m., the group would go down to the nearby Finnis River and park their bikes close to the bank. They would then begin cleaning their sand and mud-covered clothes and boots in the unusually high waters of the river. Unaware of the river's flood and the incoming strong tide and rapidly rising water levels, the group would wade into the water and begin washing off. Just a few moments later, Brett would suddenly lose his footing as he was bathing, causing him to fall and be swept away by the abnormally powerful current. A stunned Sean and Ashley would then, without hesitation, attempt to swim after him, which of course caused them as well to be trapped in the current's grip making it difficult for them to catch up with Brett, who at this point had vanished from their line of sight. Suddenly, Ashley's eyes would catch the giant head of a saltwater croc emerge from the river's surface just a few meters away from Em and Sean. He then shouts, Croc! Croc! I'm not joking! There's a king croc! Head for a tree! Get out of the water! After which Sean, who was just a few meters away from him, would direct his momentum towards an upcoming tree, which he would climb up, a few moments later, Ashley would also manage to direct himself towards the same tree where him and Sean would then perch themselves onto as they desperately began calling out for Brett 
who was nowhere to be seen. The silence was undoubtedly deafening for the pair, and it quickly became evident that something had gone terribly wrong. This is when just a few moments later, like a scene straight out of a horror movie, a massive, over three meter long saltwater crocodile erupts from the murky depths of the water, and tightly gripped between its jaws was Brett's lifeless body. A frozen Sean and Ashley could do nothing but watch at this point, as the monstrous croc would then disappear into the depths of the river, never to be seen again. The traumatized teenagers would then spend the night perched up on this tree, keeping each other awake, shivering and terrified of the croc, who had been lurking just below watching them, occasionally surfacing and resurfacing. They would spend the entire night on this tree, barely sleeping and holding on to each other for warmth. As the sun eventually rose the next morning, search parties would begin looking for the trio. Sean and Ashley, who were dehydrated, traumatized, and shaking in their boots from what they just experienced, would then hear the shouts of their friends and family from a distance, which is when they'd both instantly shout back a reply of their own. Stay out of the water. There's a croc lurking, and he's watching us. A task force was thereby created to hunt the crocodile and find Brett's remains. However, as days passed, and despite intense search efforts, the search parties would inevitably fall short of finding the crocodile or the young man's body, which would lead them to conclude that he was likely entirely consumed by the giant reptile. As more days passed, the flooded river would continue to rise, and littered debris which had surfaced would make search efforts even more challenging. It wasn't until about one week after the attack that a Parks and Wildlife Service ranger would locate a 3.8 meter crocodile not far from where Brett had been taken, and the ranger would shoot this crocodile, causing it to sink to the bottom of the river. But strangely enough, despite this successful quote-unquote kill, the croc's body never surfaced, nor were efforts made for its body to be recovered, leaving a necropsy out of question to determine if this croc was indeed the one who'd taken Brett. Crocodile attacks are a common occurrence in the Northern Territory, where populations are high and where tourists from around the world often flock to witness them in their natural habitat. In fact, one of the most popular tourist attractions in Australia is the Jumping Crocodile Cruise, which entices crocodiles to leap out of the water by dangling pieces of meat off a boat. And despite the inherent risks of such activities, which inevitably cause these apex predators to associate food with humans, visitors till this day continue to not just tour these areas, but partake in these dangerous activities. Brett Mann's tragic passing had a profound influence on the community of Darwin, where the trio was from, with Ashley still grappling till this very day with the trauma of the ordeal. And Sean, who works for his family's business, is still so traumatized by the attack that he continues to this very day to advise customers to remove any inflatable crocodile toys from their pools before he arrives to clean them. Brett's parents have since divorced and moved away from Darwin, but every year, his family, along with Ashley, Sean, and a few more friends, religiously gather at the site where he passed away to pay tribute to him by sharing fond memories, playing music, and enjoying a barbecue and drinks in his honor. This story till this very day serves as a stark reminder of the risks that come into venturing into the wilderness, and most notably, the importance of taking the right precautions when doing so. There was a crispness in the December air of 2021, as a lively cluster of friends were readying themselves for an unforgettable whitewater rafting adventure on the majestic Zambezi River. Buzzing with excitement, and with the Victoria Falls serving as a stunning backdrop, the crew calmly paddled through the rapids, captured by the beauty and tranquility of the Zambian wilderness. Yet little did they realize that lurking beneath the surface of the murky waters not far away, a large Nile crocodile had been stalking them waiting for the perfect moment to strike. In the heart of Zambia, where the mighty Zambezi River tumbles over Victoria Falls, lies a world of unparalleled natural beauty. Framed by the thunderous falls and the lush, sun-dappled landscapes of southern Africa, this wilderness paradise is home to a variety of Africa's most iconic species of animals. With elephants lumbering under the acacia trees, giraffes towering above the savanna, and zebras grazing under the watchful eyes of predatory lions, it's no wonder why the region attracts millions of nature lovers and outdoor adventurers from around the world. Yet within the murky depths of the Zambezi River lurks a far more dangerous and elusive creature, 
one that strikes fear in the hearts of humans and animals alike. The Nile crocodile, distinguished from its saltwater cousin, is a true behemoth. Growing up to 5 meters in length and weighing as much as 750 kilograms, these creatures are not just the largest freshwater predators in Africa, but also among the most fearsome. Their olive green scales provide perfect camouflage against the murky depths of the Zambezi, rendering them almost invisible to their unsuspecting prey. Their long, powerful tails also help them navigate the strong currents of the river, and not to mention their formidable jaws, armed with up to 68 razor-sharp teeth, can deliver a crushing force of around 5,000 pounds per square inch, which is of course enough to snap the bone of almost any creature unfortunate enough to be caught in them. On December 2021, the tranquility of the Zambezi River would be shattered for a group of young adventurers. Among them was a vibrant and kind-hearted 18-year-old whose name was Emily Osborne Smith. She hailed from Andover, Hampshire, UK, and this was her gap year vacation, a reward for completing her high school courses and a chance for her to quench her thirst of adventure before embarking on her college journey. Emily and her friend, who we'll call David, decided to seek thrill and experience the wild Zambezi in its full glory by whitewater rafting. They enlisted the services of the Bundu Rafting Company, a reputable outfit with an impeccable safety record operating out of nearby Livingston. That fateful day, as their raft navigated the rapids before gliding into the calmer waters, Amelie decided to dip her feet in the cool river. A sudden shock froze their laughter. Something had grazed Amelie's feet, and before she could react, Crocodile had clamped its jaws onto her lower right leg, pulling her under the water surface and what was once a peaceful scene at the river had in a matter of moments erupted into chaos. David, driven by adrenaline and fear for his friend, then plunged into the water, pummeling the reptile's snout in a desperate bid to free Emily. Even as the ferocious reptile resisted, the combined efforts of David, the guide, and another of Emily's friends, who had latched onto her life jacket, would finally wear it down enough to the point where it would release Emily's leg and vanish into the churning waters. Upon being pulled back onto the raft, the gravity of Emily's injuries became horrifyingly clear. Her right leg was savagely mangled, the bones of her ankle shattered, her hip dislocated, and she was losing blood rapidly. And to make matters worse, the rafting crew found themselves without a lifeline to the outside world, as they were unable to find signals on their cell phones. The seasoned crew, however, wouldn't allow this to deter them, and kept their cool while promptly providing first aid to Emily. Meanwhile, one of the crew members manages to send out an emergency call over their trusty radio and began anxiously waiting for help to arrive. The minutes seemed to stretch on forever, each tick of the clock amplifying their sense of urgency as Emily's need for professional medical attention became more and more apparent with each passing second. Just as the tension was hitting fever pitch, the distant thud of helicopter blades grew louder. Relief would wash over the crew as the rescue copter swoops in, quickly hoisting Emily on board and setting off on a critical journey to a hospital in Lusaka. Despite the excruciating pain and shock that she was in, Emily's spirit remained unbroken, and over the ensuing months, she would face seven surgeries, painstaking physical therapy, and the daunting challenge of learning to walk again with crutches. Throughout it all, however, her determination would remain unyielding, fueled by her gratitude for being alive, as well as the immense support she received from friends and loved ones she would thankfully make a full recovery. I said to all my friends, it's fine, I've, I've lost my foot, I'm still alive. And then I was told that my foot's going to be fine and that I will be able to walk again. It's just, it's such a relief. You don't, like, you don't really think in that situation. Like, obviously people say like you see like your life flash through your eyes, but, like, but you don't. You just think like, how do I get out of this situation? I was so grateful that I was allowed to stay here, you know, with her because she had these continuous flashbacks and, you know, uh, sure. Terrible dreams and so on at night. But now it's better, you know, but the first two or three days were sure. pretty bad. I've just seen that your life can be over so quickly. So if you're going to live thinking, it sounds so like cliche, but if you're going to live thinking I'm going to regret everything, you're never going to have a fulfilled life. So I just think just, just do it all you can. And while the 10 foot crocodile remains at large, the incident would serve as a stark reminder of the unpredictability of wilderness adventures and the Bundu Rafting Company, which had never experienced a serious incident like this in its 30 years of operation, would review its safety procedures thoroughly to ensure the well-being of future adventurers. Yet out of this harrowing experience, a beacon of hope emerged, 
Inspired by the assistance she received from the local villagers during her ordeal, Emily initiated a fundraising campaign to build a school in their community. And while the scars of this encounter will forever mark Emily's body, they have also become symbols of her courage and survival. She has faced this life-altering event with a grace and fortitude that extends beyond her physical recovery. Emily carries with her a story that is not just about surviving a crocodile attack, but also about turning a horrifying experience into an opportunity for positive change. From the banks of the Zambezi River to the classrooms at the school. Now more importantly, consider some lesser known ways to avoid Nile crocodile attacks, ones we have not yet covered on the channel before. Be cautious during breeding season. Nile crocodiles are more aggressive during the breeding season, which typically occurs from November to December. Females guarding their nests can be particularly dangerous. Watch for slide marks. Crocodiles often leave slide marks where they enter and exit the water. Being aware of these can alert you to their presence. Be careful with dogs. Crocodiles are attracted to dogs and might confuse them for their typical prey. If you're with a dog, be extra cautious near the water. Be mindful of your movements. Splashing or thrashing around in the water can attract crocodiles as it mimics the behavior of distressed prey. Listen for warning hisses. If a crocodile feels threatened, it may let out a warning hiss. If you hear this, move away quickly and cautiously. Remember, Nile crocodiles are dangerous and unpredictable creatures. It's always best to respect their territory and take precautions when near their habitats. If this episode piqued your interest, then our previous episode about an unprecedented series of shark attacks that occurred just days apart from one another is likely to do the same. You can find it on the end screen of this video.